Hi guys and welcome to the new video. Um, I hope you're getting ready for the holidays. Um, if you're in China then uh, holidays may come a little bit later. But anyway, I hope you're having a great time. And before I begin with the day, today's topic, I would like to ask you please to subscribe if you are interested in English learning and advanced English learning, if you find my topics in interesting. Um, I have this goal to reach, um, which is 1,000 subscribers. It sounds so, um, so much, but yeah, over time I, I hope to be able to continue filming that I will have um, enough subscribers. Um, and then let's get back to, to the today's topic, which is uh, the differences in English learning between Europe and Asia. Um, this was a topic that was requested by one of my students and uh, I figured since I live in Serbia, which is in Europe, and I teach mostly Japanese students, I can talk a little bit about um, the differences in English learning from a very young age. So I'm gonna share with you um, my experience and then um, compare it with what I've heard from my students. So uh, when I was uh, in, so I started uh, with my English learning when I was seven, uh, so that is the first grade of elementary school. Um, there are some kindergartens now that give English lessons, but when I was young, when I was a kid, that wasn't available. So um, I started for, from the the grade one. Um, what was different uh, in my school, we had a separate English class um, that was uh, taught by a Cambridge uh, teacher um, from a private school. So it was like a combination of a private school, but in public setting. Um, it was it was very advanced um, and it uh, it really made us uh, love English from a very young age. I hear that in most uh, elementary schools you start uh, learning English from the grade five. So that is being 10 or 11, 11 years old, which in my opinion, I think it's a little bit late. Um, of course, you have some uh, some language schools and international schools that give most of their lectures in English. So in those schools, you would you will again uh, learn English from the grade one or the age of seven. What was interesting about my first grade um, English experience is that this uh, this class was focused on speaking, and in Europe. In, no matter when you start learning English, in the classroom, when the teacher comes in, um, you have to speak in English with your classmates and with the teacher. Teacher speaks in English um, even when they give notes and when they uh, ask you questions. So uh, this English conversation is very much pushed and advised. Um, so before you raise your hand to ask a question, you really have to think in English, oh, what am I going to say? And also when you when you receive comments from the teacher, you have to be able to listen and to understand because your grade depends on it. Um, I've heard in uh, Japan mostly and in uh, the bigger part of Asia, um, I think they start learning English at the same age from the age 10 or 11 in elementary school. Um, some of them uh, even uh, start late in high school, so it depends on, on elementary school. I think starting your English learning from the age of 15, is, it is a little bit late, uh, but of course with the, the adequate program and maybe some like homeschooling, you can get to that same level, but uh, again, I don't understand why they don't force English learning from a younger age, because we all know that kids learn so fast, and when you are younger, when you start speaking early, um, your speech will improve so much when you reach high school and then college. When it comes to the exact number of hours, um, we had English, I think, three times in a week. Uh, each class has 45 minutes, so you can count how many uh, hours is that per month. Um, I think in some advanced schools and in uh, for example, language high schools, uh, they have up to five classes. Um, 
a week, so that is basically every day, but they also learn more of their native language and they also learn their second foreign language, which is usually German, French or Russian. Uh, so so they, they have a lot of, basically, a lot of language lessons uh, in a week. I know now in Japan you have kindergartens, like I said, that, um, that offer um, English studies as well and um, there are some private English schools that you can give your kids to uh, where they can uh, communicate in English very well and you're all you also uh, are uh, and you also have uh, English teachers that are native available to you when I was uh, in my country we even now rarely does somebody from from a native English speaking country come and teach um, in, in our schools. Um, they're mostly very well educated teachers, but they're not native teachers. Um, I think that's not a problem because um, that's where literature, so books that you learn from, that are usually original books um, published by some British uh, or American companies that come with a CD and, uh, and the dictionary. So uh, the CD comes in handy when you want to learn the exact pronunciation of certain words. Um, and also internet, um, movies, TV shows, everything that you can find uh, online and on the screen to listen to and to watch. This is a very good practice and that's how we improved our accent over time. You also have to keep in mind that there are some kids who are uh, more talented for languages, so they're gonna catch accents so much quicker. Usually they're talented for music as well. So if you have developed um, an ear for um, for music, you're usually better at accents. And then there are uh, kids that are really good at learning grammar and writing, but they when they speak, they, they do it a little bit slower. I was very surprised to learn that in Japan, their uh, English language education is focused on mostly writing and learning grammar. This is okay. Um, it makes my job easier when I, when I have a student who knows grammar, and at least when I try to um, make them improve uh, their speaking, they don't make those basic mistakes. But it would be nice that along with, um, with this grammar learning and, uh, and writing uh, that they also practice speaking or at least that they read what they've written uh, in class so that, that everybody can hear how they speak. So this is a, um, something that is essential, I think. And I don't know if we would, um, in this part of Europe, uh, if we would speak English so well if it wasn't for this rule that basically um, everything happens in English in the class. Uh, one more thing before I finish uh, is that I remember um, when we were in primary school, in elementary school, we uh, had these English excursions. Uh, of course, those excursions were expensive, um, but uh, we were um, communicating with a lot of foreign uh, English schools in, U in the UK, mostly. Uh, so they would offer like a, a two-week or three-week three week summer school uh, to primary school kids uh, to go to England to have this kind of advanced learning experience. So those courses were usually at that time um, maybe like um, 200 to four hundred dollars it all depended on the place so they were not in London they were in some uh, other uh, English city uh, but they were organized by these um, the, by these British schools that were operating in uh, to be more specific in Serbia uh, so I think that is also available to to Japanese students I think a lot of Japanese students go to Philippines uh, they have a very advanced courses and that is also advised for, um, for, for young kids to go through that experience because when you're very young and you're trying to communicate with uh, your friend uh, who is British or from another country, uh, you're going to really think hard um, at how, how you can do that. And so your brain will develop this language skill much, much quicker. Okay, and that is all for, for this video. I, of course, am going to continue filming. Um, 
enjoy uh, your week and see you soon in the next one.